Hey everyone, it's Joe Waxman, the astrologer. Eh. <laughs> How you guys doing? In this video, I want to talk about the solar return for Israel, which is coming up on May 13th, I believe. Um, and guys, if you have a problem with Israel, um, just don't watch it, I guess. But like I'm trying to keep I'm gonna try and keep politics out of it. I know how I feel very strongly, but probably, you know, I'm I'm sure a lot of people do. So I'm just trying to keep it neutral. I'm just looking at the astrology. It's relevant and it's something that uh I want to talk about because I mean it, it's just important to everyone right now. I mean, it's on everyone's radar. So just gonna try and keep it as neutral as possible, just so we can look at the astrology um to the best of my ability right now. Um yeah, so just on a personal note, I want to give you guys an update. Um, the job that I, I said I had did not work out. I'm not going to go into detail, but it was just not a good fit, unfortunately, for me. It's not something I could do on a regular basis. So um, I'm back to square one, and it's really, really difficult and challenging for me right now. It's disturbing. Um, just not knowing trying to get the camera in focus not knowing how this is going to work out you know basically squatting me and my mother squatting in my house and it feels absolutely dreadful to me um this is not a position i want to be in but um i have faith that everything's going to work out so just want to throw that in there guys if you can please hit the like button subscribe if you haven't already and book a reading with me macro gold machine at yahoo.com that's my email I still really need everyone's support. Um, so if you're if you can, if you're able to book a reading, I would really, really appreciate it right now. So thank you. Anyway. Um, let's let's look at the charts. You know, and I've given my um opinion about Israel before, so I'm not gonna do that. Uh, this is Israel's independence. So just review it for a minute. Obviously, so Libra rising, Venus in the in Cancer in the 10th uh, whole sign house, but ninth quadrant. Right. Uh, really, um, uh, packed 10th house that this full of malefics. And so this has a lot to do with Israel's public image. Luckily, Moon is in the lower degree. So Moon is um, not in a position to be influenced by Pluto, Saturn, Mars, but is actually influencing them. And Moon, I think, is generally a, a, a um, benefic. Sorry. Um, it is ruling the 10th house, the MC. And so it's in the 10th quadrant, 11th whole sign, uh, signifying that Israel's career does is very dependent on its friends and networks, right? Its ability to... Um, have friendly relations with with its neighbors, with other countries, um, and uh, groups and networks, even within Israel. Uh, yeah, so Moon is influencing the the these three malefics and in, in proud Leo uh, in the tenth quadrant, eleventh whole sign house, moving into the eleventh house. Mars is actually really in the eleventh, deeply in the eleventh. Um, it is a daytime chart, so Mars is the um out of stack malefic but all three of these are highly malefic especially when you're combined so like you know israel's biggest challenge is definitely the public public relations and friends and networks in general right keeping friends positive uh there's a square from its ruler domicile lord uh son um which is is good i mean the square is not the best aspect it's not the easiest but at least there's a an aspect from the sun so dignifying it from the eighth whole sign house um so from secret places hidden places um however the sun is not so bad because it it, it is actually at the degree of the ascendant so even though it's in the eighth house it can see the ascendant right i don't believe this thing where you know if a planet is in the you know sixth or eighth place or twelfth or second that it can't see the ascendant Depends on the degree, right? The exact degree will definitely aspect the ascendant. There's a tight aspect here, right? The sun is shining on the descendant, on the ascendant from, from the eighth house. Um, so it's a hidden aspect, but the, there's there's certain qualities of the, the sun in the eighth house 
which are which really work for for Israel, right? Uh, sometimes planets in the eighth house are are very difficult, uh, but this is one where it's it's more successful because of that that degree. Both ruled by Venus. Uh, does Venus have a an aspect from the moon? Well, at, uh, an inferior aspect, yeah, right. Venus is at the same degree as as the moon, but um, it is a uh, semi sextile, meaning one twelfth aspect, but it's still an aspect by degree. So that's still working. Ven moon is still dignifying Venus, which is the ascendant lord, eighth lord, right, dispositing the sun. So there's still some workingness here. It's in the tenth whole sign house, so it's angular. So it's pretty strong, even though it's in the ninth quadrant. So showing an emphasis on philosophy, religion, uh, education, that sort of thing. Um, Mercury and Uranus. Mercury is in Gemini. Uh, Uranus also in Gemini in the ninth whole sign house. I mean, eighth quadrant, you could say. Um, so some some level of of the, the pulling in the, the eighth house themes, secrecy, hidden things. Uh, psychology, that sort of thing, um, but also very much the ninth house: religion, philosophy, education, uh, higher-minded things. Uh, but in Gemini, so the Gemini and the and then the third house has has uh, Jupiter and Sag. So the third and ninth house, the third and ninth axis are are quite well um, uh, aspected by by planets, but in good dignity, right? They're inverse because that's the nature of libra libra rising all the planets all the the houses are inverse from their uh from the their natural significations right gemini is naturally a, a third house significator but um it's in the ninth and the inverse for for sag but it's still good and strong right uh third and ninth are mixing are are coming are, are are both um well dignified but also mixing so the intellect, the higher mind, short distance travel, long distance travel, um, philosophy, intellect, a lot of brilliant stuff going on here, right? Um, that's really interesting. I mean, South Node Chiron in, in Scorpio definitely indicates a very difficult beginning, very rough past, uh, being rejected, wounded, perhaps. Um, you know, I, I and once again, Chiron... <laughs> People automatically go to wounds with Chiron, even though any of the malefics can mean wounds if they're badly aspected. I more mean because it's in Scorpio, it's retrograde, it's conjunct the south node. Um, it's in the seventh, second house. So dealing with finances and shared resources, Scorpio, right, the inverse. Uh, but then the north node is conjunct the sun, so bright future. Um, Taurus is, is wealth, luxury uh um sensorial stuff but eighth house but mitigated by the degree of the ascendant right so generally um you know some goods and good and bad things obviously um fortune is is in degree of, of venus and moon so there there could be some a lot of you know mixed fortune not necessarily all good but um right um having to do with Israel itself, obviously there's, you know, and when I think like with this aspect in, in like regards to a nation, some, some nations are just like, you never hear about them. There's no turmoil. There's nothing. It's just like flat. It's like, okay, just whatever. Like, so they're, they probably potentially don't have much aspects of their fortune. It's just even, it's not, not, not terrible fortune, not great fortune, just even fortune, right? It's just, they're surviving. Nothing really much is happening, but if if fortune is being heavily aspected, especially with the ascendant, ascendant lord, eighth lord, right, uh, ninth house, tenth tenth whole sign house, uh, moon, MC, angular, right. So there's going to be a lot of fortune, mixed fortune, right. Anyway, it's pretty close to Jupiter. Um, so third house, Capricorn, Saturn, um. Saturn's not in great dignity, so there is some, you know, potential misfortune, but um, I think also mitigated by the various factors. So anyway, that is just a general overview, but we can look at some other things, in fact. Um, 
a couple things that are really interesting about Israel. Moon's out of bounds. Um, Mercury's out of bounds. Uh, Venus is way out of bounds. Venus is the ascendant lord and the eighth lord. Um, and Pluto's out of bounds. So there's a lot of out of bounds planets, right? And out of bounds planets generally are more extreme. They're more trailblazing. Um, but they can also be more malefic, right? If they are malefic, uh, out of these, um, these, none of these are, are, well, Uranus is just on the edge. So it's definitely some shocks and surprises and trauma in Israel's future. Pluto, for sure. Pluto, destructive. Um, you know, Pluto is one of the most malefic, if not the most malefic, uh, planets, right? It is very can be very destructive. So there's a lot to be said about uh, Pluto being out of bounds in the, in the chart. Uh, Pluto's in Leo, tenth whole sign house, conjunct Saturn, right? Um, so two malefics together. So very very difficult public relations, and we see that. You know, people are like singling Israel out of uh, out of the whole world, saying it shouldn't exist, right? Um, it's a fact. I'm not. Um, one of the things I like to do is, is look for the tightest aspects. One, of the, So here we see Pluto, Jupiter. Um, there's this sesquisquare. Uh, it's super duper tight. Um, and Pluto is in the superior um, um, position. Right. You always go counterclockwise. Uh so Pluto is, is sesquisquaring Jupiter. Jupiter is in good dignity, uh, but it's so tight that that's definitely going to transform uh, significations of Jupiter, the philosophy, uh, and the intellect being the third house lord in the third house. So something about religion, philosophy, intellect, uh, Pluto is going to de definitely transform it, um, ultimately for the better, but probably through a lot of deep, painful um, uh, situations destructive situations um venus is has a triceptile to the angles to that mid angle midpoints which is whatever i mean not whatever it's 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 an obscure aspect but it's pretty tight um i'm just gonna look past that one uh neptune mercury um, I didn't even look at that one, but yeah. So Neptune in the 12th with Mercury. Mercury is also conjunct Uranus. So we could say like something, and it's in Gemini. So we could say something like there, the, the brilliant intellect that is really also highly creative, right? With this trine with Neptune in the 12th quadrant, even though it's in the first whole sign house. So it's, it's um, really uh, able to be very imaginative as well as Uranium inventive, brilliant. So um, Israel's intellect is nothing to mess with. Not, so, uh, spirit is conjunct Pluto. Um, that's, I don't know how to, I mean, spirit is usually the efforts that the native makes. Pluto is deeply transformative, psychological, also um, highly strategic. So um, it says something about that. Um, let's see anything else. Um, MC is aspecting Mercury by a semi square. Anyway, um, let's let's look at the solar return. That's more what I wanted to look at. Um, we can quickly just get an idea of their secondary progressions. I'm not going to go too deep into it. I just want to. It's just a, good to get a bird's eye view. One of the things that happened was that moon was square the sun um, in the secondary progressions right when right when this whole thing occurred. Um, uh, and so that that's third quarter square is is a doozy. And this is coming up on a so this was part of the uh, cancer lunation cycle. Last lunation would have been in cancer, which is 10th whole sign house. But um activating the 10th whole sign house and the 10th quadrant 11th whole sign house so 10th very public time for israel uh public image 
um, being scrutinized. Uh, Sun here is in dignity in the secondary progressions in Leo. Um, it's activating the moon, which is the MC. So again, the public image, uh, public relations, highly um, um, indicated at this time. Um, Sun will conjunct Pluto at some point. That's um, eight years away, but uh, that'll be interesting. Um, actually, no, natal Pluto, it'll be um, uh, six years away. So. Um, but also sometime around then, before then, actually, there'll be a, a secondary progress lunation in Leo, 11th whole sign house. Uh, but again, very, very public and visible because Leo loves to be the center of attention and friends, networks, groups. So that will, that will come up majorly in this area, but it should be good because sun is dignifying this whole sign of Leo, right? So definitely positive outcome. Uh, moon is is in good dignity here, but it is square the sun. So um, it's interesting. So definitely a conflict, but things seem to be generally quite, um, I mean, okay, right? Like conflict, but it seems to work out. Sun's in dignity, moon's in dignity, right? If we just look at... Um, Secondary progressions. So Uranus is out of bounds. Definitely a time to be careful of extremes and uh, shocks and whatnot. Um, sudden events. Pluto is out of bounds. So also, and then Ceres out of bounds. Ceres I find to be much more malefic when it's out of bounds. Uh, but that's generally true of any malefic. Um, it's just going to be much more difficult to work with um but series is minor it's, but still it's series is in cancer so there's some difficult things because the last lunation um was in cancer so it's activating the series so series is in play mercury is becoming very angular uh almost conjunct the mc um and that's the ninth ninth lord and twelfth lord it's only about foreign things and exotic things coming to the forefront, public awareness. Um, communication, public communication. Anyway, let's look at the solar return. We'll look at this year and then we'll look at next year. All right. So this year we see that um, we're about to, so May 14th will have, will be um, this year, the, the new solar return. So we're almost there. This is last year. This is this whole year for 10, you know, everything that happened in 10, seven. So we see sun is conjunct uh, Uranus, right? So sun is Israel's uh, vitality. It's the significator for the, um, the solar return, the main influence. Um, and the sun represents the light, the, the vitality. Um, so there's something very shocking happening this, this year, obviously. We know that, right? It already happened. Um, sudden, unexpected, shocking. Taurus is land, right? So definitely having relating to, um, I mean, it can be other things, but definitely it does relate to the land and earth and uh, just as a general significator. Um, we also see Mercury here. Mercury is stationary, and this is very significant uh, because Mercury stationary is something that's like very slow and well thought out. Um, and this applies in the seventh house, definitely applies to, well, seventh quadrant, let's be clear, but eighth whole sign house. So it definitely applies to like um, Israel and others. <clears throat> so um, we could look at this in, in, in both regards and say that there was a, a planned event right you know 20 hindsight is 2020 20. i'm obviously relating it to um what i what i already know i can't separate that out uh but we'll look at next year and i'll make some predictions as well so um obviously there was something very um planned and plotted out uh sudden but that was also very surprising 
the stationary aspect is representing an intellect that is focused, right? Especially in Taurus, right? Something that's taken time and slow and developed, which was the attack on 10 7. And it's very significant because North Node's already here. Now, there's not a lot, there's no Venus and Jupiter are not in Taurus. There's no Jupiter is not really in a position to dignify, um, make, make any of this better. Um, you know, Mercury stationary is very strong, but it's not, um, it's not, the dignity is neutral, right? Um, this could apply to Israel's enemies, but also Israel itself, right? So it's um, fairly neutral in that way. Um, having a stationary Mercury is excellent for Israel on the solar return because Israel's Mercury is already in great dignity. Already, it's and it's already used to Uranian influence because it has it natally. So that's, um, it's not, you know, so... I, Israel is quite prepared for shock like that, especially, you know, in regards to its uh, Mercury in relations. Mercury is the ninth Lord and the 12th Lord. So something foreign and travel and exotic. Um, also notice, remember um, how the 10-7 attacks were launched. They used like the paragliders. Um, so that's also something interesting because Uranus, electricity, technology, innovation. Um, it's not super high tech, but it was something very unexpected and does bring in the ninth house element, Gemini, and 12th house, hidden secrecy, foreign, exotic. Um, <clears throat> the, the perfection is, is Capricorn, right? So um, natally, there, it's invoking the Saturn, um, which does receive the um, superior square from the sun, which is so some mitigation, but it's still very, very heavy and serious because Pluto's here and Mars. <clears throat> and Pluto's in this um, superior position, influencing Saturn. So it's very, very heavy um, Saturnian kind of uh, significations. And Saturn's ruling the fourth house. So land, land is, is, is a theme for the year. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, and so, yeah, land was attacked, right? Um, natally, or not natally, in the solar return, uh, Saturn is in uh, Pisces along with a moon and Neptune. So something very deceptive, hidden, secretive, Neptunian, Piscean, um, illusion, delusion uh, related to land. Um, and it's in the sixth house. So something very conflictual, right? A lot of conflict, conflict here and hidden things mysterious we don't we don't really know like pisces is just very it's wonderful for creativity esotericism spirituality movies cinema anything like that but not so good for hard hard concrete logical stuff right mercury is debilitated in pisces so we <clears throat> and in detriment um or fall exile um so there's a lot of confusion with Pisces and hidden things, and we don't know what, exactly what's going on. So we can expect that for the year in relation to land and whatnot, especially also conflict, a lot of mysterious conflicts going on, uh, confusion abounds. Um, Moon is the MC Lord, so it, it's bringing in the public, public confusion uh, all around, right? Both from Israel's side and the public side about Israel. Uh, the relationship is very confused. Um, let's see, Chiron is in the seventh whole sign house. I don't know. It doesn't seem like there's too many aspects there, or at least negative ones, but just uh, Chiron can bring in reject rejection and fear from others and masses and whatnot. So there's not really a lot of mitigation here. Uh, Venus is in in the almost in the natal position, and um, actually it's aspecting Mercury. Not Mercury's in the superior position, but so sextile. So there's still there is some mitigation from Venus, although we'd rather see it. Well, Venus is the domicile lord, yeah. So that's good. Uh, Venus would be better um, in in Taurus or in um, Pisces or 
uh, even Capricorn so because of the trine, but still it's okay here. Um, and it's in a natural position, you know, very similar to its natal position. Um, we do see Mars is in Cancer and it's pretty much conjunct the MC and the angle midpoint of, of the solar return year. So Mars is going to be um, very uh, public uh, theme for the year. Uh, Mars is not good in Cancer. Mars in Cancer can be quite violent and destructive, vicious, nasty. I mean, really, uh, it's one of the one of the things about Mars and Cancer is it's not as well organized or as destructive as a strong Mars in a difficult situation, but it's sort of like just this erratic, um, loose cannon kind of Mars that will lash out uncontrollably without any, um, without any, uh, sort of honor or dignity, right? It's a very dig um, dishonorable, violent Mars potentially. And it being angular, that it's it's quite strong. Um, let's see, does it receive any mitigation? Um, actually, Jupiter, Jupiter's not very strong at the anoretic degree, regardless. Uh, but it is square, and it is the exaltation lord, uh, and moon is trine. So there's some mitigation. So there is both. So there's mixed. So it's like Mars will lash out and be you know um wildly destructive um in a very public way but there's going to be some remediation from both venus and and jupiter um i'm sorry jupiter and moon and then and then venus also being a, a benefic is in the sign of cancer so um and it's in the superior position so that that helps so there's some mitigation Um, Pluto's in, in, um, Aquarius conjunct fortune by seven degrees and it's retrograde at the zero degree, zero degrees of Aquarius. Um, so, um, we could say something like, you know, Israel's, um, a lot of Israel's political, social, uh, issues are up for review this year. Um, especially by the public, right? Which seems to be the case. A lot of questioning about Israel. There, there, is, there are various systems of government, the leaders, the leadership. I don't know. All of all the all the uh Aquarian um archetypes are, you know, and by I'm saying the retrograde, it means that it's up for review. That's sort of a retrograde kind of uh association. And Pluto being very generational applies to the people, the masses, and uh, not just in Israel, but not excluding Israel. So everyone, right? Everyone's looking at Israel and being like, um, what's the best way for Israel to be? And I'm not obviously not talking about Palestine, Gaza. They're also talking about that as well. And we, I'm not looking at it. I don't even know uh, how we'd look at a chart for that, but this is just Israel, obviously. Um, so yeah. So... Um, let's see. Uh, the moon is actually square the nodes. The natal moon is square the um, the solar return nodes, and moon is the MC Lord in the tenth quadrant, eleventh whole sign house. So, uh, yeah, it'll be a very public year for for Israel. Right. It's obviously not career, uh, but just general public image, public reputation, um, the general direction of, of Israel is, is is cancerian, right? But also very proud and and um aggressive. Israel definitely has a lot of aggressive qualities, but it has to because it's facing hostile enemies. Um but yeah, that's interesting. So the moon is square the nodes and um uh, Moon actually dignifies, you know, exalted. It's exalted in, in Taurus. So it's actually, I mean, yeah, I mean, there's there's some there's some 
you know, good outcome here because the moon is aspecting the North Node. It's not in this superior position, but still. Um, and negatively aspecting Scorpio because, you know, moon does not do well in Scorpio. So something about um, something starts not very good, but ends up good. That's how I see it. Um, let's look at, so we can look at it also just on its own, which I like to do. I like to do both. And you get double, you'll get the double significations of the, the, the houses, the houses overlays of the natal chart will activate those houses. And it'll also activate the houses on the solar return chart alone. Um, so we're getting Jupiter, Sag rising and Jupiter's bounds, Jupiter at the anoretic degree. So that already is an indicator that there's something um, in Aries, um, something about this year that potentially is not so good because the anoretic degree is generally considered not a great degree. It's a tire, it's tired, it's about to change dignity, and it's just not in its full vitality. But that's not all. There's also this square to Pluto. Pluto is in a superior square to Jupiter. So that is indicating something is really potentially off about this year. Because Jupiter is the Ascendant Lord. It's also the Fourth Lord, right? Land. And it is in the Fifth House, um, along with Chiron. Um, and so actually... What this signifies is children, right? Um, and we know that children were, were one of the issues, is one of the issues, ongoing issues with this whole thing because uh, Hamas has captured children. Not only that, uh, somebody else pointed out that they have, it's been over seven months uh, and they have women and they have been raping these women. We know that. And it's not a political thing. That's just, I know some people want to lie, but it, we have all the evidence. I mean, they, uh, but watch, this is, this is uh, a key point. There's something that they're doing. They, they thought this out, the Mercury stationary, uh, they planned this. Um, somebody pointed out that uh, they're going to make a drag on past nine months because they, for whatever, they have some strategy. They want to take the children. They want to create the children. They want to make children. They want to, yeah. Have these hostages as women, women hostages, female hostages, impregnate them, carry them to term, and do something with them. I don't know what, but it's something deeply sinister. Right? So children are a part of it, um, unfortunately, right? Uh, let's see, Mars, Mars is in Cancer, right? So the fifth Lord is not in good dignity, despite the remediations, and it's at, at the angle midpoint. So there's something very and it's in the eighth eighth house, right? Eighth whole sign house. So there's something very deceptive, manipulative um, about the fifth house um, and fourth house, land, fifth house particularly. Um, no, four, fifth house, sorry, 12th house. My apologies, I'm just got confused for something fifth fifth house and twelfth house uh and the south disposing the south node um a lot of deception hidden things going on here right and maliciousness lack of integrity mars and cancer um there's some um yeah uh not only that there's a, a strong trine from neptune to mars so furthering this deceptive quality, the hidden quality that's going on. Uh, obviously, moon is a, um, a dignifying factor. So there's some remediation there, like we noticed before. And um, there's some there's some reception here with, with Jupiter, in fact. I don't know, Jupiter's not very strong at the anoretic degree, but Mars is in... Um, uh, Jupiter's sign of exaltation and Jupiter's in Mars's domicile. Uh, it's by square, but there's some, there's some, that's something. 
Um, we see the North Node, Mercury, Uranus, Sun, all activated the sixth house, so conflict, right? And then Venus is in the eighth house. Um, sixth floor in the eighth house is generally not bad. Excuse me, packages. Uh, because it then it's it's sort of indicates sort of the death of conflict. Uh, so that I think is actually okay. And Moon, although not by degree, is in a sign trine to Venus. So uh, there's some some remediation there by by Venus, by Moon. Um, there's a trine with Saturn, and actually that's good for Saturn, right? Saturn and Saturn is the Lord of the Year. All right, it's a second second Lord in the fourth. So assets and security, right? Um, land security. Uh, it's not superior, but and then but Saturn's not really good for Venus, so that's unfortunate because uh, Saturn does not do well in in Cancer. But it's a trine, so it's not so bad. Um, Venus is being activated by fortune in an inconjunct, which is not it's not the best aspect, but at least it's an aspect um showing that th this is a very eventful year venus is the ascendant lord of um israel's native chart natal chart and it's also the 11th lord here and um the sixth lord right so uh dealing with conflict and friends groups networks right um uh, that's uh, very obvious there's so so there's some mixed fortune there but generally because the the, the aspect uh, seven and seven, you know, because Venus can see fortune. I think there's a, that's a remediating quality. Sun series trine. So series is okay there. Um, Pluto's in the same sign as fortune. And uh, Pluto square Jupiter, the ascendant Lord. So there's, that is definitely in play. There's some, strong indicator there that pluto square jupiter is going to be part of the fortune and fortune just doesn't necessarily mean good fortune you know obviously it can mean any for kind of fortune right it's just not it, it just means this will be an event eventful year for for israel right not an unevent not a boring year because most years are boring most years nothing happens but this shows that it'll be a very eventful year having to do with pluto square jupiter um uh venus you know sixth house all the dis dispositing all these planets and the 11th house um dispositing spirit right spirit in, is sort of the counterpart to fortune fortune is things beyond our control spirit is things that we what we do with it so um interesting it's invoking both of those one through aspect one through um dispositorship um mercury is ruling the mc and the seventh house so mercury has a lot to do with uh public public image public perception and then it being um stationary in stubborn taurus shows that um people are going to be very thinking a lot about Israel this year and going to be very, very fixed in their, in their viewpoint, right? Whether supportive or unsupportive, right? They're going to be very, very stubborn. It's because it's both the public houses, the seventh and the 10th. Tenth. tenth is public general public significations, right? Um, and then the seventh represents the masses and personal relations. And they're all in the sixth house. So a lot of conflict, but very, very stubborn and North node obsessively stubborn. Right. We were witnessing that. And, you know, um, very, very uh, strategic in a sense that, you know, the stationary indicates long thinking about a um, particular area. So people are just going to think about it a lot. Right. Just very fixed on these issues, which seems to be the case. Right. Nobody wants to think about anything else. Um, some people think this is the only thing going on in the world, which is amazingly, which is it's not. But, uh, people think that. Um, 
Saturn square the angles, the uh, ascendant, descendant. Uh, so that's activating that in a restrictive way. So kind of uh, Israel will be somewhat restricted. Um, let's see, by its neighbors, by the global civilization, by groups, networks. And it's in the land. So, yeah, and we're seeing that, too. Israel definitely has a lot of restrictions uh, being imposed by um, various influential factors. The United States, particularly Joe Biden. Um, Mercury's also at the degree of the ascendant. So, um, you know, Israel this year is also going to be very smart, right? They're going to do a lot because, yeah, it's, it's aspecting the ascendant. So they're getting... They're getting a lot of mercurial, that stationary mercurial um, influence. So stationary mercury is well, well thought out, right? It's just something that just sticks to one point and thinks it through and through and through and through deeply, right? And it's conjunct the North Node. Um, so everyone's just like thinking about Israel, thinking, 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 stubbornly. And there's an aspect with Venus so that it's actually dignified there. So... Yeah, um, Israel's not in a bad position. Yeah. All right. Um, so I think, you know, this clearly indicates a case for, for the themes that played out this year, right? Um, so Venus is out of bounds in the solar return. It's even more out of bounds in Italy, so that's nothing new. Uh but it's ruling the sixth house of the conflict and the 11th house, friends and networks. So definitely something extreme going on there. All right. Let's, let's look at next year. And I will try to make some predictions, general predictions. All right. So this is coming up May 14, 2024. It is May 9th. So this is very relevant. Um, that's why I want to do it. Um, better it goes said than unsaid, right? Um, some people don't want to hear anything positive about Israel. So I'm trying to keep it neutral as possible. All right. Here we can see Jupiter, Sun, Uranus, Venus, all in Taurus. And I'm starting with the sun because it's the solar return, right? So sun is the main significator. Um, obviously, it's 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 going to be as conjunct its natal position, but we'll see it differently um, in this standalone solar return chart. So the sun is um, being blessed by Jupiter, which is the the um, daytime bene uh, benefic of sect, and Venus, which is the domicile lord of uh, Taurus. And is the ascendant lord of of Israel's natal chart. Um, uh, we can see also that Uranus is Kazimi the sun, and so this is very significant. Before it was not Kazimi, and there's something very unique about planets when they are very tightly conjunct. Right, um, when planets are very tightly conjunct, it's like the eye of the hurricane. You have the hurricane on the sides, but the eye is calm. So that's why they say like. Uh, when a planet is Kazemi, it gains special powers. It's at the heart of the sun, right? But anytime two planets are conjunct, they they form a unique quality because there's no separation. So they can really um, harmonize uh, much in a much better way versus um, applying or separating um, where there's at least, you know, the, some degree of separation. That's going to be much more um, challenging, you know, especially if you're talking about malefics, which Uranus can be very much so, right? But here we have the dignity of Jupiter and Venus, dignifying and the Kazemi. So there's going to be something very shocking about this year, but in a very positive way for Israel, right? Very positive. Um, because versus last year, there was no, there was no immediate remediation, no dignifying you know, Venus and Jupiter were not, helping out uh, the the sun, plus uh, Uranus was a few degrees 
applying to the conjunction, which is much more difficult. Uh, so that's really pro positive. Two, Venus is domicile, Jupiter and, in, in, um, you know, just conjunct the sun, blessing the sun as the main benefit. Um, so Venus, obviously ruling the ascendant, and um, the the eighth, eighth full sun house. Um, so Israel is in a powerful position this year. Right? Um, obviously the natal natal sun conjunct the degree of the ascendant. Um, at the, it, quincunx are in conjunct the degree of the ascendant. Uh, so Uranus, uh, at the degree of the ascendant quincunx in conjunct. Um. Jupiter is the sixth lord, so conflict. Uh, still, there, there could be some conflict because Jupiter is the sixth lord and it's combust to the sun, right? So there's still, you know, it's not like it's all going to be easy peasy for Israel. There's still going to be conflict um, with Israel, uh, but I think Israel will have the upper hand. Um, Jupiter ruling the third as well, invoking um Israel's natal Jupiter plus look at the degree Jupiter Jupiter 27 27 so that's also a quincunx which isn't the the best aspect but by degree um it's exact so it's an exact hit so it's definitely activating Israel's natal um dignified Jupiter and Sag in the third house so it's intellect um This is a a uh, Aquarius perfection year, so Saturn is still the planet, the Lord of the Year. Saturn is still in Pisces, along with Neptune and the solar return ascendant. So we could say that similar themes about this year: a lot of Neptunian fog, Piscean confusion, um, foreign things. Um, just illusion, delusion, confusion, right? Um, in regards to Aquarian themes, you, uh, Pluto is still in Aquarius. Uh, this and bringing up issues of of the children, right? And this also can relate to hostages because for Israel, um, you know, the hostages are like children. The citizens are like children. I'm saying it like that. Um, plus, a lot of them are children. Right, not all of them, but they're they definitely have children, and children will be a theme about for for this year. Uh, we're going to see that play out. Children will be a big theme for Israel, right? Getting the children back and what they're what they're doing with these women, right? Making you know their you know children. I don't know what they plan on doing. Maybe they plan on keeping the, those children. I don't know, but something not very not very nice, not very good. Um. But yeah, um, theme Aquarian themes and and fifth house themes. So like uh, a lot of the the similar themes about Israel society, government, social, political issues, um, still up for review. Pluto's retrograde both in both solar return years. Um. So yeah, a lot of things are up for review. Um, you know, a lot of people say they want Netanyahu out. Some people like them, some people don't. I don't know. I'm not. I don't live there, so you know that's for them to decide and figure out. I'm neutral. Um. In in the seventh whole sign house with sixth quadrant, we do have Mars in Aries uh, with the North Node, Chiron still here, um, and so Mars is in dignity in Aries. So um, that's generally good. Mercury is also generally, you know dignified because mars is in domicile so mercury is, is is enabled by that so the seventh and eighth houses are are quite quite good quite quite well doing quite well right uh venus also is at the degree of saturn 17 degrees in a sextile um not superior inferior but venus is in domicile and uh exalts in in pisces so venus is actually blessing saturn by the degree so that's really good and it's very very tight it's within 10 arc minutes um so saturn here is not going to be nearly as malefic as it would be otherwise because at least it has 
the uh, sextile from, from Venus. Jupiter also by sign is sextiling it. It's the domicile Lord, uh, but not by degree. Uh, Jupiter actually actually is, is dignifying, uh, sextiling uh, Neptune. So, um, you know, a certain amount of awareness of the deception is, is uh, um, you know, coming, uh, being indicated here because Jupiter is the third Lord right at the degree of its natal Jupiter. So that indicates that this year Jupiter will be, you know, awakened. The natal Jupiter is being activated and awakened their intellect their, um, and applying to confusion, delusion of the sixth house, uh, Neptune, sextile. So that's good. Uh, moon, moon is at the natal position pretty much by two degrees. So that's very comfortable, familiar, and it's the MC. Um, you know, so there's, there, I think generally that's that's good, right? Because it's something that they're used to. It's not unfamiliar. It's something the world is used to. So it's kind of like a default to, um, you know, the the original sort of. Uh, um understanding of israel or, or something where israel was created under this this archetype so going back to that in other words like as far as the public opinion of israel it's not going to be very different from where it started at. um there's not really much um, mitigation or, I mean, there's a square, there's a very mild, I guess, but it's, it's, it's actually back to its natural, it's back to its birth situation, right? So that's really interesting, right? It's solar return. Moon is in the, the set, almost virtually the same position as it was when it was found, founded. So there's something very significant about this, this year um a renewal this will be somewhat of a renewal year somewhat of a like bringing back the conditions where from which israel was started founded something about that will be uh very active this year but it'll generally be good because of the dignity of taurus and the eighth house shared resources Right, they, uh, Israel could receive a lot of help this year financially. I think it could, you know, right now Biden is withholding munition supplies, but I think that could change. I think something will shift. I just realized Mars is at the degree of Neptune in an opposition. So that's interesting. And I'm not sure what exactly some some deception um mars is in good dignity here but it's not in neptune it's not in libra so the aspect towards libra is to, so there could be some deception definitely uh by others right some mer mercurial deception um i think you know it'll be a mix because i think Ju um, israel will have um be aware of some of the deceptions going on and perhaps not all of it. Because Mars ruling the seventh house, others um, opposite, you know, so it's it's sort of, you could say like others can negatively influence Israel's natal Neptune. So causing confusion for Israel. But at the same time, uh, Israel has the, some amount of wisdom or foresight on on the 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 uh, Piscean deception going on here. Uh, oh, fortune also is being aspected by natal sun and and Uranus and ascendant descendant axis being at the same degree. So it's going to be a very fortunate year uh, for Israel. Not necessarily good, just a lot of fortune. 
uh, good and bad, but I think overall good uh, because fortune is being activated. So not a boring year at all. Also, we see MC and then Jupiter also activating uh, fortune. Also, what's really interesting is the degree of the angles. We can see like the midpoint degree is um, for the year is at the same. No, that doesn't make sense. Oh, that's it. Yeah, at the at the um, yeah, very close to his. Uh, yeah, because it's the dual chain. Anyway, sorry. Uh, close to Israel's natal ascendant. So a very big year. Yes. All right, let's let's uh let's look at it on its own. All right. Pisces. So it's a Pisces ascendant year. Uh Saturn is the lord of the year in the first house. Uh so indicating that there's you know that there's a lot going on with Israel's identity. Uh, there could be restrictions on Israel this year, Saturn, uh, confusion, delusion, fantasy, all, all sorts of things. Um, we do see moon in conjunct the degree of the ascendant comes from the sixth house. So a very conflict, conflict, conflictual year, but moon being at the degree. So definitely indicates that there is going to be a line of sight to the ascendant. So Israel is going to be aware of the conflict they're going to have a connection to it and it's not going to be so bad if it's not at the degree and it's in the sixth house it's going to be much worse right because then there's no contact this is contact this is not aversion this is contact um so we see the taurus house is in the third house uh communication intellect travel um neighbors right i think israel is going to receive a lot of help from its neighbors this year right because that's one of the indications about the third house the neighbors neighborhood right we can see clearly here that it's going to be a very big year for israel a lot of fortune uh uranus is aspecting tightly uranus and sun tightly aspecting fortune right uh jupiter also um by conjunction carrying its and uh, light, if you will, to fortune, so dignifying fortune. So generally, good year, right? Also by by that. So there's going to be a lot of positive fortune uh, indicated here. Venus uh, conjunct spirit, so their efforts will, will also be successful and somewhat um, shocking, surprising. Uh Saturn, Venus, sextile, which we already talked about, right? Uh, so, um, and also, so it's the twelfth house perfection, perfection year as far as the, um, you know, the solar return is is concerned, the solar return, standalone solar return chart. So uh, something about hidden things, foreign things. Uh, in the first whole sign house. So awareness of foreign and hidden and secretive things. Because it is the first, it is the, the second from the 12th. So there's some awareness, the pro production, you know, it's when, if it was the 12th from the 12th, that would be a, a negative indicator. That would be loss of the 12th house. So something bad, but it's first from the 12th. So that, Something positive, something out comes from the 12th. Something comes out of it. But it's still, you know, hidden, secretive, mysterious, illusion, delusion, confusion. But with some with some insight into the confusion. Right. <clears throat> uh, Pluto is not really making any squares this time, so that's good. It was it wasn't the, the the current uh solar return year. Mars is in the second. So with North Node in Aries, so Israel is going to put up a very, very tough front and exterior, right? Strong, aggressive stance. 
The second house is about appearances. It's about assets. It's about security. Israel will protect its assets. Israel will protect its security um, very strongly with Mars and Aries uh, conjunct North Node. And it'll be quite intimidating to its enemies this year. The nodes are trying the MC and the descendant um, or sextile and trine. So the nodes are supportive there. Uh, <clears throat> South node, eighth house. North node, second house. I think that's that's quite good in general, more indicative indicative of like the negative qualities of the eighth house um, are in the past and the positive qualities of the second house are in the future, right? Israel's gain, Israel's security, Israel's image fueled by a very strong, potent Mars in Aries, domicile, and a very strong third house. <clears throat> So Israel is going to put up a big front this year, um, not just a front. Um, it's well supported. So it's going to talk big. It's going to look big. And it seems like it'll act big, too. Uh, I think it's overall very positive. Definitely still a lot of conflict. But I think positive outcome. Um, moon is slow, nearly out of bounds, but not quite. Uh, series is station and out of bounds. And then we get the series Chiron square. Series is station out of bounds. I don't, I mean, that's really like, I don't know how the out of bounds plus stationary, uh, series Square Chiron, I mean, you know, mundanely, I, I, I thought it was related to I don't want to work because uh, series is about mon mundane agricultural type stuff. Um, Chiron, I mean, it is a malefic, especially when negatively aspected. So there's there could be some difficulty there, some challenge, especially it seems in bad aspect to the um well to both angles, right? So some bad actors, bad perhaps people wishing, hoping for bad outcomes for Israel, but these are minor. These are not major major factors, although it, it could be a real pain in the butt. Not gonna lie. I think I think overall Israel definitely is in a good position to um, to win to win this year to overcome its the odds it's facing. Um, yeah, I don't I don't know what else to say. I mean the Saturns. You know, being aspected by Venus, and that's quite good. And then Mars and dignity, and then everything else. All right, I already talked about everything. All right, that's that's pretty much it. Um, all right, guys, I, I hope you found this interesting. And no matter what you think of Israel or Palestine, Gaza, all that, um, we're talking about. So I tried to keep it as neutral as possible. I hope it was palatable for those of you who. Hate Israel. I hope nobody hates Israel <laughs> watching my channel. I mean, um, but anyway, um, that's it for now, guys. Hit that like button, subscribe if you haven't already. Book a reading with me, please. I need the need the help right now. So, uh, macro gold machine at yahoo.com. That's my email address. And Joe Waxman, the astrologer, signing off. Eh. I'll see you guys again soon. Laugh it off. Take a victory laugh. Win before you win. And all that good stuff. I'll be back hopefully with another video soon. I haven't been making other videos because I've just been like 
so consumed by everything that's going on. I just can't help it. It really affects me deeply. Plus all the anti-Semitism um, just breaks my heart, makes me really sad and depressed. Um, so that's been tough to deal with, but uh, it's okay. It's fine. I will survive. All right. I'll see you guys soon.